hello students i hope you are all keeping safe this is sp singh pgt english from kv vansagar and i am here with you once again to discuss a beautiful poem this poem number 2 in your flamingo textbook an elementary school classroom in a slum by steven spender in the beginning i would like to tell you what all we are going to discuss uh in these videos first we will have a quick and brief introduction of the poet after that we will discuss briefly the theme of the poem after that one a uh, model recitation of the poem in two different voices and then we will continue our discussion detailed explanation on the poem so uh, i would like to begin our discussion on the poem let's see first of all the introduction of the poet before we discuss the introduction of the poet i want to make one point clear to you all the poem is not an easy one so please uh, keep taking note each and every word particularly that i speak so many things the slides will display but that will not be sufficient for you from the examination point of view so please keep taking notes in each and everything that we discuss through the video so well this is steven spender before you born in 1909 in england so he is a british poet uh, novelist and essayist as well major themes in his works Uh, they were based on social injustice and class struggle so social injustice class inequality class struggle is also the theme of the poem that we are discussing here the god that failed was a very famous novel written by him and it is believed that uh, this poem is also uh, the part of that novel so this is a lyrical poem lyrical means it expresses the emotions of the poet in an imaginative or a very beautiful way sometimes it is also said ki that can be sung also right so so this is the introduction of the poet let's go further and now let's discuss uh, the theme of the poem that appears before you well in this poem steven spender deals with the theme of social injustice and class inequalities so class inequalities please focus on this means there are clear divide in our society uh it is divided into two classes the rich and the poor right he presents the theme by talking of two different and incompatible worlds the world of rich right and this world of rich is considered to be the uh, the civilized world and another one the world of poor needy people unprivileged people and this world of rich and civilized people has nothing to do with the world of poor people the world of narrow lanes right and the world of cramped holes right that is what so there is a clear divide there is a clear gap gap between these two worlds right that highlights social disparity disparities mean inequality and the class inequality that is what it is right so the poem attacks on the capitalistic economies in which the rich are becoming richer and the poor gets poorer so this is the problem of the world right so what what does the poet want through this poem he makes an appeal to the the civilized society what is an appeal to abridge the gap to eliminate the gap ki matlab ek gap between jo rich and poor poor hai use khatam kar diye so the because these poor are devoid of any opportunity to grow in their life to prosper in their life to get any good education right and they have become victim they have become prey to social injustice is tarah se unke sath injustice hua hai so in this poem steven spender right demands equal opportunities equal treatment uh, in terms of education in terms of opportunities right in terms of basic needs basic facilities wo in unprivileged logon ke liye wo aisa ek hai treatment dene ki baat karta hai राइट right? और उसे उम्मीद है उस इस उम्मीद के साथ उसने पोइम्स आपको हमारे लिए यहाँ पर लिखी है सो दैट इज ब्रीफली वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द थीम ऑफ द पोइम कम ऑन नाउ 
uh, I would like to move on to the model recitation of the poem in two different voices. One voice is mine, of course. Right? Please enjoy the recitation of the poem one by one and uh, silently uh, read uh, uh, with, the, with me and with the reader. Come on. So dear students, you have uh, enjoyed the model recitation of first two stanzas. I will make a follow up recitation of the first two stanzas before we move on to the rest. Far, far from gusty waves, these children's faces. Like rootless weeds, the hair torn round their pallor. The tall girl with her weighed down head. The paper seeming boy with red eyes. The stunted, unlucky air of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled disease. His lesson from his desk, at back of the dim class. One, unnoted, sweet and young. His eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game and tree room other than this. On sour cream walls, donations, Shakespeare's head, cloudless at dawn. Civilized dome riding all cities, bare flowery Tyrolese valley, open ended map, awarding the world its world. And yet, for these children, these windows, not this map, their world, where all their futures painted with fog, a narrow street sealed with a lead sky, far, far from rivers, caves, and stars of birds. So this was the recitation. Now enjoy the next. Fine. Now, my recitation 
Surely, Shakespeare is wicked, the map a bad example, with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal, for lies that slyly turn in their cramped holes, from fog to endless night. On their slag heap, these children wear skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottled bits on stones. All of their time and space a foggy slum, so brought their maps with slums as big as doom. Unless governor, inspector, visitor, this map becomes their window and these windows that shut on their lives like catacombs break or break open till they break the town and show the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books the white and green leaves open history there whose language is the tongue So that was the recitation and now quick discussion on the introduction of the poem. For the millions of youth living in slum, slums, daily life is very grim. Kids start their lives on poverty, France, without access to education, infrastructure or sanitation. They are subject to hunger and disease and are thrust prematurely into adult responsibilities. So please try to compare these children who we are going to discuss with the merry children spilling home in my mother at 66. What a beautiful picture of children and what a sweet picture of childhood was showcased there. Compare that picture with this, this bleak world, this dark world, this unprivileged, unfortunate childhood and these impoverished children, they are very poor, these slum children. Come on. The poem by Stephen Spender gives a vivid description of school classroom in a slum and the children in the class. So the setting of this poem is in a slum classroom, slum area. This is actually a school which is in a slum area. And I hope you must have visited the schools in the slum areas. The building is very poor, sometimes there is no roof, walls crumbling, no plaster or plaster is removed, not cleaned, not maintained, not repaired, right? Children also that attend those schools, they are very poor, right? Very dull also, no facilities in these schools, no proper infrastructures provided by the governments, fine. So this is the condition of those schools. Uh, Sometimes the, even the teachers are not there or insufficient teachers. So that kind of a slum area classroom, of classroom, of school ke classroom ko is, is, is poem a present kiya gaya. So children have a gloomy faces, their heads hanging low in sadness due to the poverty and depression. Spender voices his concern for these children. Now the Poem has been divided into the four stanzas. Quick introduction of these stanzas. The first stanza depicts despair in the classroom. You will see that uh, the children have been introduced who are sitting and uh, uh, they are attending this classroom. Uh, their health condition is very poor. There is dullness on their faces. They are malnourished. Their, their entire body is untidy. Right. So that is the situation here. So children have been introduced to us. Second stanza depicts negligence as the classroom is unkempt, is not in accordance with the children of slums. So you'll see ironies, uh, beautiful ironies in the second stanza, where so many things that are promised to the children shown in the classroom are actually not at all given to the, the, the children. Uh, it is shown to us that there is darkness in their future. Future is uncertain. Third stanza depicts the reality of their lives. What is their reality? We will come across that one and it poses a quest. And fourth stanza uh, starts with a positive note, note of hope. Poet makes an appeal to the civilized world, right? to the lawmakers, to the powerful rulers, to the politicians, right? And everyone, every one of us to bring
bring light and positivity in the life of these children of slums they need it promise them education promise them good health basic facilities and basic amenities of life so that is what the introduction of the poem now let's move on to the first stanza see now i have divided the stanzas into little bits the first few lines of the first stanza let me read far far from gusty waves these children's faces like rootless weeds their hair torn round their pallor the tall girl with her weighed down hat so they see that steven spender shows us that the conditions of these children in slum school is pathetic very miserable very unfortunate their world is far far from our uh, healthy fresh environment and it can clearly be seen on their faces that have a depressed expression see that one far far from gusty waves try to understand what are the gusty waves this is a first metaphor as well as a symbol introduced to us gusty waves literally means strongly blowing winds but it represents here what it represents here uh, pleasure energy brightness liveliness animation so is there any pleasure energy liveliness animation brightness happiness on the faces of the children no the first line tells far far from the city waves means the faces of the these children are far away from the energy from the animation from the liveliness from the happiness these children's faces is it, it is missing from them waha se nahi hai तो आपने पहला मेटाफर और सिंबल एक साथ देखा गस्टी वेव्स सी दैट वन फार फार इज अ रिपीटेशन राइट फारवर्ड इज रिपीटेड टू स्ट्रेस ऑन द फैक्ट दैट देयर इज अ वाइड गैप और डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द लाइफ ऑफ दीज चिल्ड्रन फ्रॉम अ फ्रेश एंड एनर्जेटिक इन्वायरमेंट गस्टी वेव्स आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन सी द लाइक रूटलेस वीव्स द हेयर टर्न राउंड दैर पैर ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड लिसन टू माई वर्ड्स the hair of these children are compared with rootless weeds what is this this is a simile like rootless weeds the hair see that one rootless weeds are wo kya hai unwanted weeds unwanted plants ghar patwar jo apne aap kahin bhi ug jate hain aur hum ukhad ke unko fek dete hain so the bachcho ke jo hair kis tarah se compare kiya we what happens to them when we uproot them and throw them away those unwanted plants kya hota hai unka so they become dull dry and withered woi dullness woi dryness woi witheredness in ki hair mein dekhiye aap the hair kaise torn around their pallor means torn around means scattered and pallor pallor is the face what kind of pallor is what kind of is dull face sad face the faces are already sad said no pleasure happiness dullness and on their um, face uh, the hair are scattered spread like rootless weeds come on so this is the condition simile has been used here now there is a girl girl has been described as a tall girl tall girl kaisi hai with her weight down head see this one a tall girl is described by the poet and she has a bowed down head which shows the burden of the stressed life she leads aap dekh sakte hain ki this tall girl uh, uh, has been presented as if she has a burden over her head so what burden actually she is in un, under a great stress and depression she is not able to hold it not able to carry that one and that's why her head is bowed down jhuka hua hai uska hera to aap samajh sakte hain ki the girl is actually mentally and physically exhausted puri tarah se wo emotionally mentally physically puri tarah se exhausted ho chuki hai wo uske chehre se clearly nazar aa raha hai let move on to the next slide now see this one the paper seeming boy with red eyes that stunted unlucky air of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled disease his lesson from his desk at back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes lit in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this another boy who is as thin as a paper too has the same undernourished look on the face see that one paper steaming boy isko dekhiye ye simile ki jaise nazar aayega aapko par hai 
बेसिकली एक बहुत ही ब्यूटीफुल इमेज है ये पेपर सीन अ बॉय एस थिन एस पेपर इमेज है और इसके साथ साथ मैं आपको बताऊं ये मेटाफर दिस इज अ मेटाफर पेपर सीन इन बॉय इज अ मेटाफर अ बॉय विच इज विच हु इज सो थिन सो वीक दैट ही इज रिड्यूस्ड टू अ पेपर पेपर के जैसे हो गया आगे देखें इस मेटाफर के बाद दिस बॉय ही इज अ स्केर्ड एक्सप्रेशन इन इज आईज and the eyes are as if searching for something right see that one kya yahan par dekhiye red eyes now the eyes of the boy are compared with the eyes of rat red eyes with red eyes ye dusra metaphor hai this is another metaphor ab is comparison ko dekhiye two three explanations can be given first one red eyes uh, you must have seen or noticed the rats are always in the search of food chori se they are always probably this boy is also hungry starving and he is also in the search of food that's why red size secondly probably you can say yahan likha bhi tha bhi ki there is he the the eyes of the boy are scared fine so there is a fear in the eyes of the boy which fear just like the rat has a fear of being caught similarly the boy has a fear of being noticed being caught this is the second explanation वन मोर कैन बी गिवन रेड साइज यू मस्ट है ध्यान से देखेंगे इमेजेस देख लीजिए दे आर स्लाइडली बल्स आउट थोड़ी बाहर की और उभरी हुई निकली हुई सी रहती हैं द आईज ऑफ दिस बॉय और आर ऑल्सो बल्स आउट वाई एक बच्चे की आईज बाहर की तरफ क्यों निकलेंगी कि वैन द बॉय इज मैन नरिस्ट ही डिड नॉट हैव अ प्रॉपर न्यूट्रिशियस फूड इन इज लाइफ and because of malnourishment his eyes because of weakness physical weakness the eyes have bulged out so that is but uh, with red size now see that one he is lean and unfortunate heir who has inherited the twisted bones of his father seems to be enumerating the inherited uh, disease of his father ab isko samajhne ki koshish karte hain the boy is stunted ab is stunted word pa focus karenge stunted स्टंटेड ट्री जैसे मतलब अ ट्री हुज ग्रोथ इज ब्लॉक्ड सिमिलर स्टंटेड बॉय हुज फिजिकल ग्रोथ इज ब्लॉक्ड यानी उसकी हाइट और हेल्थ इंप्रूव नहीं हुई है वंस अगेन बिकॉज ऑफ मेल नरिशमेंट उस कारण से उसकी हाइट एंड ग्रोथ जो है वो डेवलप नहीं हुई है अब ये क्या कैसा है अनलकी एयर ऑफ टिस्टेड बोन्स सी द वर्ड एयर एयर वी एयर मीन्स वन हु इनहेरिट्स वॉट डू वी इनहेरिट फ्रॉम आवर फादर्स और फोर फादर्स प्रॉपर्टी वेल्थ right or so many other things right these are the things we inherit property health house car or some good attributes also but this boy is unlucky because he has not inherited all these things from his father what has he inherited uh, he is the successor of what kya inherit kiya hai kya borrow kiya father se a uh, disease of twisted bones which disease means his bones are twisted probably his father had this bone related disorder and genetically this bone related disorder uh, has uh, transferred into this child arthritis kind of disease ke or tarike disease ke haddiyan haddiyan pure tar ki mudi hui hain okay so he that's why he is called unlucky heir what is this boy doing try to understand reciting a father's nald disease aage badhte jaiye his lesson from his desk Now there, अभी थोड़ा सा फोकस आप करिए रिसाइटिंग वर्ड पर इट इज अट दिस वर्ड एक्चुअली हैज अ पन बिकॉज इट इज पन इज वेन वेन वन वर्ड और वन लाइन कन्वेज मोर देन वन मीनिंग तो इट कन्वेज टू डिफरेंट मीनिंग रिसाइटिंग रिसाइटिंग पहले तो था रीडिंग रिसाइटिंग इज रीडिंग अटरिंग और रिसाइटिंग का दूसरा मीनिंग यहाँ पर आएगा शोइंग डिस्प्लेइंग पहले मीनिंग से देखते हैं पहले रिसाइटिंग अ फादर्स नॉल्ड डिसीज हिज लेसन फ्रॉम हिज डेस्ट Okay, when the teacher told him uh, to give the answer of the question or read some lesson, so boy who is not because of twisted bones, bone-related disorder, not even able to do that, but he is doing it. So when he is reading the lesson as asked by the teacher, actually, उसके साथ साथ वो क्या करते दिख रहा है? While reading his lesson, ऐसा लग रहा है he is uh, uh, displaying, demonstrating his father's nerve disease. तो ये दोनों मीनिंग इस तरह से होते हैं ही इज रिसाइटिंग हिज लेसन फ्रॉम हिज डेस्क एक मीनिंग दूसरा ही इज रिसाइटिंग अ फादर्स नॉल्ड डिसीज फ्रॉम हिज डेस्क पहला मीनिंग 
he is reading out a lesson because that has been told by the teacher to do and at the same time reciting means showing uh, the bone related disorder that he has inherited from his father so very unfortunate unlucky heir this is the condition of the boy see that one now poem moves further at the back of the dim class there is one unnoted sweet and young boy this boy is different from all, all, all other boys why because there is no dullness no depression no stress on his face which was there on the faces of the other children this boy is unnoted uh, what he is doing nobody has noticed but he looks sweet he looks young and there is hope in his eyes look at this his eyes live in a dream there is a dream uh, in his eyes right which dream which hope is there in his eyes of a squirrel's game probably this boy is uh, looking outside through the window and outside there is a tree and in the tree there is a tree room tree room matlab chidiyo squirrels ke rehne ka ek chota sa jo ghar jas hota hai na quarter that is called a tree room and what is going on on that tree probably a squirrel uh, is uh, playing a kind of a game coming out of the tree room and in search of the food and one thing in going back aapne dekha wo busy rehti hai puri time to boy intently with complete concentration is watching that squirrel's game so that dream in, in, in his eyes ko baat ko samajhiye ki uski aankhon mein ye hope aur dream hai kya ki he is waiting or thinking or having a dream ki he also will get the opportunity to go out of this classroom and uh, enjoy the world the beauty of the world and play a game like that squirrel right यहाँ से निकल के अदर देन दिस अदर देन दिस डल फिल दी क्लास रूम अनफॉर्चुनेट क्लास रूम ही विल गेट एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू गो आउट सो देर इज अ होप देर इज अ ड्रीम दिस बॉय इज डिफरेंट ध्यान दीजिए यहाँ पर द पोइट हैज यूज एंट्री थीसिस एंट्री थीसिस मीन वैन टू कॉन्ट्रोडिक्टरी आइडियाज कम राइट एक साथ आती है तो आप देखें एक आप देखें किस तरह से कंट्रास्ट द आईज ऑफ द टू बॉयज एक तरफ तो आपने देखा था रेड साइज देर वॉज अ फियर in that in the eyes of that boy aur dusri taraf ye eyes of this boy there is a dream there is a hope in the eyes of this boy so this boy antithesis has been used this boy is different from that one so in the first stanza we have discussed the uh, poor malnourished condition of the different children while one boy was different from them let's move on to the second stanza from here See this one. On sour cream walls, donations, Shakespeare's head, cloudless at dawn, civilized dome riding all cities, belled, flowery Tyrolese valley, open-ended map, avoiding the world, its world. There are the answers. Stanza, you will see. In the second stanza, the poet describes the classroom, which is. also dirty and neglected like the inhabitants like the children the classroom too exhibits an atmosphere of depression and glum sadness ka atmosphere charo taraf hai kahan se pata chalta hai on sour cream walls right kaise walls hain isko bahut dhyan is image ko dekhiye bahut image hai yahan par ye bahut shandar isko dekhiye kaise walls sour cream walls sour cream is a dull of white color there is a dullness probably the plaster has removed probably um, there is a seepage on the classroom walls the the color has gone right uh, there is dirt everywhere right so ye to dekhne mein hai but indirectly kehna kya chahta hai ye ye is tarah ka jo wall hai uh, it is making a negative it is creating a negativity in the classroom it is uh, kind of a spreading a dullness in the classroom so that's why this sour cream is very very important थिंग यार इसलिए कहा है यहाँ कि डिप्रेशन एंड ग्लम देर इन द क्लास रूम द वॉल्स और ऑफ अ क्रीम कलर एंड ऑन दैम अब उन वॉल्स पर क्या है अब जरा इस बात को देखिए डोनेशन डोनेशन सम पीपल सम कैपेबल पीपल गिव डोनेशन टू द पीपल वट कैन डोनेशन मैप्स आपने देखा पिक्चर्स सीनरीज पोर्ट्रेट्स ऑफ ग्रेट लीडर्स और ग्रेट राइटर्स एक्सेट्रा or some other beautiful scenes they give and these donations these gifts are displayed uh, at um, in the classroom 
सो दीज आर द डोनेशन यहाँ पर भी वैसे डोनेशन हम जरा वन बाई वन देखते हैं क्या हैं डोनेशन इनका ये रियली किस चीज के लिए स्टैंड करते हैं और यहाँ पर रियलिटी क्या है थोड़ा आयरनी पर आप ध्यान देंगे कि यहाँ पर आयरनी किस तरह से यूज होने वाली है द फर्स्ट डोनेशन इज शेक्सपियर्स हेड लुक एट दिस वन बस्ट ऑफ द ग्रेट पोइट शेक्सपियर विद राइट हैज बीन डिमॉन्स्ट्रेटेड हियर नाउ आप पिक्चर में यहाँ देख सकते हैं तो शेक्सपियर्स हेड वॉट डज इट प्रोमिस वॉट डज इट सिम्बोलाइज वॉट डज इट रिप्रेजेंट माइंड माई वर्ड्स शेक्सपियर रिप्रेजेंट्स लर्निंग ही रिप्रेजेंट्स नॉलेज विजडम एजुकेशन एंड लिटरेचर फाइव वर्ड्स लर्निंग नॉलेज विजडम एजुकेशन एंड ही वॉज अ ग्रेट ग्रेट राइटर ग्रेट प्ले राइट सो ही रिप्रेजेंट्स लिटरेचर ऑल्सो नाउ ही रिप्रेजेंट्स ऑल दीज थिंग्स do these children have any access to that those things that the um, shakespeare uh, stands for your answer will be no do the children have any access to learning any access to knowledge wisdom education literature they didn't even have the taste of all these things not even have any introduction of all these things so what is the meaning of this picture the presence of this picture in the classroom is very ironical because what it promises is not at all given to these children and that's why irony comes into the picture let's see other another cloud as a dawn another portrait here what one what is that one clouds let cloudless at dawn uh, this is a, a picture of a crystal clear sky in the morning dawn morning sun is rising and its rays are spread in the crystal clear sky what does it symbolize this cloudless at dawn it symbolizes hope it symbolizes bounty and beauty of nature and also it symbolizes happiness three things tell me these children, are the any of these thing is there in the life of the children once again your answer will be no no happiness they cannot even go out of this classroom and enjoy the beauty of the nature the bounty of the nature is there any hope no no not at all no hope in the life of the future hopelessness is there in the so once again this is irony uh, the picture is ironical for these children another one the civilized dome riding all the another portrait aap uh, is series mein aap last wala portrait dekh sakte hain is picture mein kya dome means dome shaped structures big buildings ab ye big buildings kya ho sakte hain big buildings big educational institutions uh, big uh, or you can say the big malls president's house white house right the great taj mahal big hotels big educational in institutes like howard university cambridge university big buildings like great taj mahal right big hotels etc all these together these rising towers what do they represent symbolize they symbolize the progress and development that the world has achieved right but thing is that civilized dome riding all cities means spread over you can see from sky but what do they promise once again progress civilized civilization and development three things so do these children have any access to this civilized world that progress that development not even the taste of it kuch bhi nahi hai unke paas they are very poor don't even get proper food so once again this is very ironical what is this picture doing here what it is promising the children have no access to it then another one belled flowery tyrolese valley tyrolese valley a valley of tyrol region tyrol is a province in austria europe there is this tyrolese valley and what this valley is famous for this valley is famous for beautiful flowers colorful flowers and these flowers mostly if you see just do the google search and bell flowers bell shaped flowers bell ke jaise unka shape hai bahut sundar nazar aate hain to wo wahan par bahut sare hain so bell flowery tyrolese valley so what does this picture now promise this promises once again beauty and bounty of the nature beautiful scenic beauty of the nature once again it promises hope and happiness also do the children get the taste of all those things never never they cannot even go out and enjoy that one now come to that one open handed map 
there is also a map in the classroom this is a map of the world right let's see there is also a map hung there which is actually totally different from the world of these children which is full of poverty right so ye kis tarah ka map hai ye dekhte hain map of the world i want to explain in a little detail the map of the world and what does this map of the world promise it promises opportunities it promises a lot of explorations lot of travels means we can go travel and explore wonderful things in the world and enjoy them gain a lot of knowledge through our exploration through our journey do the children get any opportunity to do this never can't even come out of that classroom and this dirty slum surroundings then what is this uh, uh, world map doing there do they get what this world map of the world promise no not at all milta hi nahi unhe so this is once again ironical thoda aur detail mein chalte hain open handed kyon open handed map open handed map actually map is the symbol of the world divided and redesigned by the rich and the powerful people thoda sa example se samajhiye just like hitler in the world war 2 won a lot of countries and merged them into the german territory so what did he do he divided the world and reshaped it new map of the world came out and isi tarah se ye jo dictators powerful rulers big politicians greedy politicians and other people also they divide and reshape the world as per as per their wish as per their need and as per their convenience and what do they do they impose this map their own map of the world on rest of the world उसे इम्पोज कर देते हैं तो ओपन हेडेड मैप इज अ सिंबल सिंबल ऑफ द रिच एंड पावरफुल पीपल्स वर्ल्ड डोमिनेटेड बाय द रिच एंड द पावरफुल लास्ट नाइन पे देखिए अवॉर्डिंग द वर्ल्ड इट्स वर्ल्ड क्या करते हैं ये लोग दे अवॉर्डिंग अवॉर्डिंग मीन्स इम्पोजिंग वॉट डू दे इम्पोज द वर्ल्ड इम्पोज ऑन द वर्ल्ड इट्स वर्ल्ड पहला वर्ल्ड दो द वर्ल्ड रेस्ट वर्ल्ड इट्स वर्ल्ड मीन्स द वर्ल्ड ऑफ द रिच पावरफुल तो वॉट डू दू दे इम्पोज देयर वर्ल्ड ऑन टू द रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड और फोर्स करते हैं उनके ये है दुनिया का नक्शा अब ऐसा माना जाएगा तो दिस ओपन ये वो वाला मैप है जो यहां पर दिखा रहा विच इज प्रोविजिंग लॉट ऑफ लग्जरीज लॉट ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज लॉट ऑफ एक्सप्लोरेशन बट द चिल्ड्रेन डू नॉट कैच इट कम ऑन लेट्स नाउ मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड सी दैट वन एंड येट फॉर दीज चिल्ड्रेन दीज विंडोज Not this map their world, पर इन इनके लिए क्या मैंने आपको होता है ये मैप केवल दिखाया जा रहा है उनके लिए प्रॉमिस किया जा रहा है पर है नहीं दीज चिल्ड्रन दीज विंडोज अब विंडोज अब दूसरा सिंबल आ रहा है आप देखिए मीन्स इनका वर्ल्ड क्या है देयर वर्ल्ड इज वॉट दैट दे कैन सी फ्रॉम द विंडोज ऑफ द क्लास रूम आउटसाइड द विंडोज ऑफ द क्लास रूम वॉट इज इट डर्टी स्लम सराउंडिंग तो इस तरह से विंडोज है विंडोज इज अम्बल ऑफ डर्टी स्लम सराउंडिंग नोट करके रखिएगा नैरो लेन्स राइट क्रैम्प्ड हाउसेस इम्पोवरिस्ड राइट कंडीशन ऑफ द हाउसेस नो रूफ वॉल्स आर क्रम्बलिंग नो ड्रेनेज राइट पीपल एनिमल्स लिविंग टूगेदर सो दिस द कंडीशन no sign of progress happiness and development this is their world not even the basic facilities water running water electricity even those things are not provided the, the windows are their world dirty impoverished unhealthy slum surrounding not this map their world jo map jo dikhaya gaya hai wahan par jo classroom mein hai it is not their world wo unka nahi hai keval promise kiya ja raha hai their world are is the window तो आप समझ गए होंगे किस तरह से दो सिंबल आए और कैसी है हकीकत जरा देखिए लास्ट लाइन वेर ऑल देयर फ्यूचर इज पेंटेड विद फॉग व्हाट काइंड ऑफ डर्टी स्लम सराउंडिंग्स विंडोज वेर देयर फ्यूचर इज पेंटेड विद फॉग ये देखिए मेटाफर आया यहां पर पेंटेड विद फॉग सी सो पेंटेड विद फॉग मीन्स जस्ट लाइक वी पेंट ऑन द वॉल्स राइट विद अ कलरफुल पेंट यहां पर फॉग को पेंट कर दिया गया फॉग ये मेटाफर है फॉग स्टैंड फॉर होपलेसनेस डार्कनेस राइट उनकी लाइफ आप कह सकते हैं दे लाइफ इज पेंटेड विद अनसर्टेनिटी एंड डार्कनेस इन द फ्यूचर दैट इज वॉट देयर 
इस तरह से मेटाफर पेंटेड विथ फॉर्म ब्यूटिफुल इमेज एंड ब्यूटिफुल मेटाफर और देखिए ड्रम्स स्लम सराउंडिंग्स की रियलिटी अ नैरो स्ट्रीट सील्ड इन विद लेट स्काई कैसे स्ट्रीट है नैरो स्ट्रीट ये दूसरा मेटाफर है नैरो स्ट्रीट मतलब केवल वहाँ नैरो है जगह ही नहीं है ऐसा नहीं है नैरो स्ट्रीट मीन्स यहाँ पर ये मेटाफर है और इम्पोवरिस्ट स्ट्रीट वेयर देयर यू कैन से यू कैन फाइंड देयर डर्ट एंड स्लम सराउंडिंग्स नॉट इवन साइन ऑफ प्रोग्रेस एंड डेवलपमेंट फैसिलिटीज आर नॉट अवेलेबल और कैसे कैसे डर्टी स्लम सराउंडिंग्स है सील्ड इन विद लेड स्काई तीसरा मेटाफर यहाँ पर लगातार आ रहा है विद लेड स्काई लेड इज अ ग्रे कलर ग्रे स्काई ग्रे स्काई सिंबल है यहाँ पर आप ध्यान समझ लीजिए सिंबल ऑफ अ नैरो वर्ल्ड कैसा वेन सगेन डार्क ग्रे स्काई इज द सिंबल ऑफ होपलेसनेस डार्क एंड अनसर्टेन फ्यूचर मीन्स देयर लाइफ इज कन्फाइंड टू दीज नैरो स्ट्रीट एंड अंडर द लेड स्काई मतलब दे कैन नॉट कम आउट ऑफ इट they are confined imprisoned into the in the into these dirty some slum surroundings unse bahar aana unke bas ki baat nahi hai unke liye mauka bhi nahi hai last lines dekhiye far kaisi life hai in rehne walon ki yahan par far far from rivers caves and stars of world life kaisi far from rivers and caves rivers to aap jante hain caves are geographic 